Coming up on today's show, GM shuts down production at the Arin facility where the Bolt EV is made. Volkswagen says it will undercut the Model 3 by seven or eight thousand US dollars with its own long-range car, and BMW contemplates a 200-mile i3. These stories and more coming next on 10. Like all our content, today's show is funded by the in-stream ads on today's video and by the kind donations of viewers like you. Follow the link at the end of today's video to make a monthly donation to our Patreon crowdfunding campaign to help us keep independent and impartial. And if you're already donating, thanks for your continued support. It's Friday, July 21st, 2017. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and we're now officially one month away from the next big US total solar eclipse. And as it's my daughter's birthday that day, and we're just around the road from the line of totality, we'll be watching it. How about you? This week, we heard the news that General Motors' Arin plant, where the Chevrolet Bolt EV is made, will remain closed for a little longer as the automaker tries hard to deal with a growing inventory of vehicles. But while some have claimed that the shutdown is because the Bolt EV isn't selling, the real reason that GM is struggling to sell the Chevy Sonic, a car that shares the same production line as the Bolt EV. Sure, stocks of the Bolt EV are higher than they should ideally be, but GM is at least trying to change that by promoting the Bolt EV a little more, as this weird but clever infographic this week comparing the Bolt EV to the original Lunar Rover shows. I'm not sure it will get more people to buy a Bolt EV, but it's a good reminder of how far EV technology has progressed in the last 40 plus years. As regulars to the show will know, Elon Musk loves to announce fun things on Twitter, and this week he let the cat out of the bag that his tunnel boring company, known as The Boring Company, has received verbal government approval to build an underground Hyperloop tunnel between New York City, Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Washington, D.C. A commonly traveled route for many a commuter, Musk's new tunnel would theoretically slash travel times between New York City and DC to just 29 minutes, which is actually faster than the average flight. However, while Musk says he has verbal approval, that's very different to the long and drawn out process of gaining official signed and sealed approval. We'll just have to wait and see if he gets that one or not. Nissan continued to drip feed information about its next generation LEAF this week by releasing a teaser video detailing its new e-pedal system. Essentially a switch that enables single pedal driving, the system will make it possible for you to slow down and speed up the 2018 LEAF with just the throttle in the majority of situations, leaving the brake pedal for emergencies and super slow speed maneuvering. If you're unsure what I mean by single pedal, I have made a video explaining it all earlier this week, so I've left a link in the description below. The use of autonomous vehicle technology across the US got a little closer this week when a bill containing a suite of proposed changes designed to make it easier to develop and use autonomous vehicle technology passed a US House of Representatives committee, allowing it to progress to full house voting this fall. The bill includes an exemption for self-driving cars from certain US safety standards, as well as a set of measures designed to stop individual states from setting their own requirements for autonomous vehicles and thus slowing down the adoption of self-driving cars. We'll have to wait until the fall to see if the bill undergoes further refinement or is passed as it currently stands. Last week on the show, I shared with you the news that Lucid had been pushing its air sedan to the absolute limits on a test track, reaching an impressive 235 miles per hour. Well, this week, we heard the news that Lucid was looking for a buyer, and that buyer isn't going to be Ford after the Detroit giant decided, after some lengthy discussions, that Lucid wasn't a good buy. It's not clear right now why Ford decided against the acquisition after showing some serious interest, nor is it clear what Lucid's future may be. Like so many startups, it's got the tech and more than 100 million in funding to date, but without some serious, serious backing, it can't bring its $60,000 electric sedan to market. I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens next. With autonomous vehicle technology clearly the next big thing after electric drivetrains, or perhaps even coming to market in parallel with it, automakers are throwing serious cash at any company or technology that could give them an edge in the marketplace. Which is why startup Now2 has received new backing this week from BMW, Toyota, and GM, all of whom are interested in its rear view based autonomous driver tech that not only looks ahead, but keeps an eye on the driver alertness too. Why 
Why is it so big to all three? Well, without a way to monitor driver alertness, level three and level four vehicle autonomous cars can cause a major problem for legislators and safety advocates because we humans become the weakest link. Here's hoping that the investment pays off and Noto's tech starts appearing in production cars soon. With the Tesla Model 3 launching in just a few weeks time, Volkswagen is upping the fighting talk by promising that its ID electric car, which will feature a similar range to the Model 3 as well as super fast 320 kilowatt DC charging, will come in somewhere between seven and $8,000 less than the Model 3. Smaller than Model 3, the Volkswagen ID has only been seen so far as a concept vehicle, but Volkswagen is adamant that the production model, due in a few years' time, will be able to meet the Model 3 punch for punch, and that also includes having autonomous capabilities. Will it be a fair fight or a knockout in round one? I don't know. Another automaker talking up its plans for plug-in vehicles this week was Hyundai Kia, which confirmed that it wants to produce a total of 50,000 electric cars during 2018. So far, the two sister companies only sell the Ionic EV and Soul EV as their plugins. But as of next year, two new models will join the fleet in the form of brand new Hyundai Kona EV and the Kia Niro EV, the latter making its all electric debut next year following successful launch of its hybrid sibling. In total, it's expected the two models will bring in 25,000 new sales, adding to existing production of about 25,000 globally to reach that magic 50,000 unit target. It's good news for consumers too, since more electric cars means more choices in the marketplace. Nice. In the past few years, we've seen Porsche make a really serious about turn on electric vehicles, switching from an automaker not even willing to give electric cars the time of day to one seriously focused on bringing a plug-in model to market. And this week, Porsche took one more step towards an electric future when its CEO, Oliver Bloom, said that Porsche is considering ditching diesel engines completely in order to focus on electric vehicle drivetrains. Of course, I'm sure that the Dieselgate scandal had its part to play in this decision, but it's nice to see Porsche make another step towards leaving its gas guzzling past behind it. Since it launched the i3 electric car in 2012, BMW has made a few incremental improvements in its design and capabilities, including a larger capacity battery pack for its 2017 model year version that's capable of more than 114 miles per charge. Now, claims BMW blog, the company is looking to bring a 200 mile version of the i3 to market as a way to cross shop more effectively against the Tesla Model 3, the Chevrolet Bolt EV and new Nissan Leaf. While BMW isn't confirming or denying the rumors, it does seem at least plausible given how much of a range jump we're seeing between established brands and brand new cars. After all, BMW has to keep up or lose out. For a while, Elon Musk entertained the possibility that the upcoming Model 3 would feature an optional solar roof for those who wanted it. And while we've known for some time now that it wouldn't be offered as an option from the get-go, some had hoped that it would be added to the Model 3 configurator at some point in the future. Well, now it seems that Musk has all but killed the idea, stating this week that while Tesla engineers have looked at the option, the only way they could get a solar roof that would actually charge the car in any meaningful way would result in a massive fall Holding structure that would be very complex and very costly, and even then it would only add about 30 miles of range a day. He hasn't killed it officially, but honestly, I think it's a stillborn concept. Put the panels on your roof and be done with it. Sticking with power, we're off to Hawaii now, where the state's utility companies have received regulatory approval to carry out a suite of measures designed to get the 50th state's electricity grid off fossil fuels and onto 100% renewable electricity by 2040, a full five years before the state's mandated target date. Previous attempts, made in 2015 and 2016, were deemed too vague by regulators, but the current proposal, which must include all customers and third parties, meets all of the criteria set and should be a way of setting the island onto a bright new future of zero emission electricity for good, complete with grid-backed battery storage systems, vehicle-to-grid projects, and smart grid technology. Here's to a greener future for all Hawaiians. And finally, you might not know it, but there are a great deal of electric vehicle enthusiasts out there who also have an interest in private flight, be it microlight, gliding, sailplane, or fixed wing, or even helicopter. And this week, we saw those two worlds combine beautifully, courtesy of this video from the Netherlands, which shows the world's fastest production SUV, the Tesla Model X, use its immense torque and acceleration to perform a tow launch of a glider into the air. It's beautiful, zero emission, and shows just how electric 
vehicles and other forms of transport can coexist to make the world a cleaner, greener, more beautiful place. And on that good note, it's time for me to say goodbye for the week. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit that notification button to make sure that you don't miss out on an episode. And if you like what I'm doing, why not contribute to the show's cost via Patreon? I've left a link below and a clickable one at the end of this video. As always, I'll be back next week with more cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation news. But until then, thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. This was 10. Have a great weekend. And until next time, keep evolving.